and it begins. I'd like to welcome everyone to the 2020 UFIFAS Range Cattle REC Youth Field Day. Today's presentation is going to be Feed in Stuff. My name is Chris Pravat. I'm a beef cattle and forage economist here at the UFIFAS Range Cattle REC. So I'd like to thank you for joining us today and let's get started talking about Feed in Stuff. Today we're going to cover uh, supplemental feed stuffs. We're going to talk a little bit about forages, and we're also going to feed some cattle. All right, so now let's talk about energy supplementation. So we have two energy supplements here that we're going to discuss. Our first supplement is corn or whole corn, and our second supplement here is uh, citrus pulp pellets. Okay, so for corn... Our corn, our whole corn, is going to be 88% TDN, or energy, and 9% crude protein. So it's an excellent source of energy for our beef cattle diets. We also have, we also have citrus pulp pellets. So obviously this is a byproduct of our citrus industry in Florida. Our citrus pulp pellets are going to be 79% TDN, or energy, and... 7% crude protein. So it provides us with a good energy source in our beef cattle diets as well. All right, so whenever we're thinking about energy, okay, energy is going to be a crucial nutrient in all beef cattle diets. Energy provides the body with the ability to do work. For beef cattle, work is going to include growth, reproduction, movement, feed digestion, and for cows, that means lactation. Sometimes energy requirements are going to be needed in order to meet an animal's nutrient requirements. In beef cattle rations, we're going to express energy as percent of TDN or total digestible nutrients. Protein, carbohydrates, and fats are going to provide the energy into beef cattle diets. When digestible energy becomes the limiting factor in our beef cow diets, that's going to limit both intake and animal performance. Both of those will suffer. So for optimal animal performance in our beef cow diet, it's going to take adequate amounts of digestible energy. That's going to be what's required. So let's talk a little bit about protein supplementation. So I've got four protein supplements here today that we're going to discuss. Now, each one of these protein supplementations is, are also high in energy, which is also very important, as we just discussed, for our beef kale diets. So, our first um, supplement for us to consider is cottonseed meal. Our second supplementation is dried distiller's grains. A third supplement that we're going to look at is whole cottonseed. And our fourth supplementation that we'll consider is corn gluten feed. Okay, so let's go to our first uh, protein supplement that we're going to look at here. Now, this is going to be cottonseed meal. Okay, so our cottonseed meal is going to be 76% TDN, which is our energy, and 41% crude protein. So this is an excellent feedstuff if we want to provide some protein to the diet as well as getting some energy into our animals. So that's our, co our, our cottonseed meal. The next supplementation that we're looking at here is our dried distiller's grains. Okay, so our, our dried distiller's grains here, our dried distiller's grains is going to be 
89% TDN, which is our energy, and 27% crude protein. So our dried distillers grains is going to have a little bit more energy than our cottonseed meal, uh, but it's going to have a little bit less crude protein. So here is our, our dried distillers grains. The next supplement that we're looking at here is whole cottonseed. Okay, so looking at our whole cottonseed here, our whole cottonseed is going to be 95% TDN, which is our energy, and about 23% crude protein. So it's an excellent energy supplement. Out of all four of our protein supplements, whole cottonseed has a lot of energy. It also has adequate, adequate amounts of crude protein, 23% crude protein. So that's our whole cottonseed. Our last protein supplementation that we're going to look at here is going to be corn gluten feed. So look here at our corn gluten feed. Our corn gluten feed is going to be 80% TDN, which is our energy, and it's going to be 22% crude protein. So it's got a, a good amount of, of TDN and a good amount of crude protein. It's a really good ration for us to meet both of those requirements. Have you ever noticed molasses or that black, dark brown, sticky stuff in your cow's feed? Molasses is a syrup that is derived from raw sugar during the refining process. As you can guess, it is used in many cattle feeds. It is also used to supplement low quality forages in the cattle's diet and has been used for years in Central and South Florida. Molasses is a protein supplement that is used for grazing cattle that is highly palatable and fed through a lick tank or in a tub traditionally. Molasses supplementation is very flexible as other feeds and products can be added to make it into a slurry. Adding other feeds or products allows producers to better meet the nutrient requirements of their cattle. As you can see, molasses is a very important protein supplement that is used here in South Florida. It's a critical nutrient in all of our beef cattle diets. Sometimes protein supplementation is needed in order to meet animals' nutrient requirements. So in beef cattle rations, our protein is going to be expressed as crude protein or percentage of crude protein. Protein is one of the main building blocks of the body. It's going to be a major component of muscles, the nervous system, and connective tissue. Adequate dietary protein is going to be essential for maintenance, growth, lactation, and reproduction. Young growing cattle in particular need relatively high levels of crude protein in their diets to support muscle growth. Some signs of protein deficiency include lowered appetite, weight loss, poor growth, depressed reproductive performance, and reduced milk production. So having adequate levels of protein in beef cow diets is going to be important for, for animal health and productivity as well as ranch profitability. So as we're thinking about protein supplementation here, these options are going to be able to meet those uh, protein needs that we have in our beef cattle animal diets. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about fiber that's in the diet of our beef cattle animals. We have two uh, supplements here that we would think about fiber getting into our beef cattle. We have cottonseed hulls, and we also have mixed grass pasture hay. So let's look at these cottonseed hulls. So our cottonseed hulls, they're going to have 45% TDN, 5% crude protein, and on crude fiber, they're going to have about 44% crude fiber. So it's really, really important uh, for us to include that crude fiber in some of our growing rations if we're dry lotting. So we've got our crude fiber in our cottonseed hulls. Now, 
on a mixed grass pasture hay, such as this mixed grass pasture that we have here that we took some hay from. Our mixed grass pasture hay is going to be 50% TDN or energy, 9% crude protein, and in terms of fiber, our acid detergent fiber on this mixed grass uh, pasture hay was going to be 43%. So this also provided us with our fiber needs in our beef cattle animal diets. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about fiber that's in our beef cattle animal diets. Okay, so for fiber, fiber is all about keeping that room in functional. So our cottonseed hulls, as well as our mixed grass pasture hay, is going to be very popular in dry lot situations because it's going to satisfy the roughage factor of the rumen. So for the rumen to work correctly, it's going to have to slowly degrade the fiber, and that's going to scratch the walls of the rumen to stimulate muscle contractions in that wall of the rumen. Um, this keeps the contents of our rumen agitating, and uh, that's going to be just like a washing machine that agitates. It's going to allow those microorganisms to attach the, to the material and begin fermentation. Now, obviously, in pasture conditions, forages that livestock eat is going to supply the, the fiber uh, needed for the roughage factor in their diets. So... Uh, whenever we're thinking about fiber, these are re two really, really important sources for fiber. Alright, so now let's go out there to the pasture and look at some of the forages that our livestock commonly eat. Alright, so we've entered into a perennial mixed forage pasture. Now this perennial mixed forage pasture is predominantly bahia grass. Um, so bahia grass, obviously it's a warm season perennial grass. Um, it's going to grow between, uh, between early April through late October. It's going to put on a good bit of growth. And uh, it's going to provide the nutrients for our beef cows. Uh, so this sward of, of bahia grass is, is uh, mostly 50 to 55% TDN and, and 8 to 10% crude protein. If we can keep it in a vegetative state, young, growthy sward of bahia grass. Um, if we're going to look at uh, raising some replacement heifers or finishing some animals, uh, it's okay to have them out here on these perennial mixed uh, forage pastures, but we also need to provide them with some uh, necessary supplement in order to uh, get those animals uh, to their target end weights. So again, perennial mixed forage pasture. Now let's go look at uh, providing some supplement to those uh, replacement heifers and finishing animals. Minerals are another essential nutrient we need to make sure that we provide to our cattle on a regular basis. It is essential to have access to trace minerals. They are used for metabolic processes associated with growth, health, and reproduction, much like water is. Forage supplemented cattle or grazing cattle are often deficient in trace minerals, unless they are being supplemented with a feed or another mineral source as well. Feed and forage should be supplemented with trace minerals regularly. Several ways to supplement minerals would be through a free choice form, which an advantage can be they can be incorporated in your feed or you can use it in a loose form and allow the animals free choice. However, a disadvantage of this process is you may over or under consume the minerals, you need a proper formulation for your animals, and there is an ongoing expense associated. Injectable is another form of mineral supplementation. Some advantage, you can guarantee what dose you are providing to your animals. This is a one-time cost and it's easy to supply to your animals. However, on the disadvantage, you need to follow your BQA guidelines to ensure you're providing the injection in the proper locations. You must handle the animals on a regular basis, and you do have the potential to create toxicity 
in the animal. The final form of mineral supplementation we're going to discuss is through a block. A block is an inexpensive way to provide minerals to your animal, and you can move them throughout. However, disadvantages are they aren't a very viable source of minerals. A lot of times they provide more salt than mineral, and it is an inconsistent use by the animals. Mineral supplementation is a good management practice that everybody should be following. Did you know water is one of the most essential nutrients in the cow's diet? It is essential we provide a safe supply of water on a daily basis. In the cattle's diet, water is required for things such as body temperature regulation, growth, for those breeding stock, it helps in reproduction, and then after she's bred and has that calf, it helps in the forming of milk for the lactation, metabolism, mineral balance, and many more other functions. Intake varies throughout the time based on things such as dry matter intake, which could be linked to feed or hay, the outside temperature, the percent humidity in the environment, the different stage of production that the animal may be in, and many other factors. It is very important that we have a safe, clean, and cool water supply for our animals on a regular basis. If possible, take that extra step and clean out your water troughs when available. Now what we were looking to do there is we wanted to make sure that they were going to have plenty of bunk space. And the other thing was we, we wanted to check them for the day. You know, if we're only going to be feeding one time a day, we want to make sure that they're in good condition. There's not any serious problems there. We just want to make sure that they're good and healthy and they're ready for their next day of grazing, of performance, and of good activity in our cattle. All right, so we're out here. We want to supplement... Uh, this set of replacement heifers right here. These are about 600 pound replacement heifers. We want to supplement them with about 3 pounds per head per day. So that's 0.5% of body weight. We're supplementing them with a ration that is 74% uh, TDN and 18% crude protein. And again, we're going to give these 600 pound replacement heifers about 3 pounds. Uh, they're out here on perennial mixed forage pastures and uh, they're going to get about three pounds of supplementation of a mixed commodity ration. So let's go ahead and, and supplement these replacement heifers.
very good. We've got all of them eaten. And they're getting their three pounds. That's wonderful. All right, so our second group that we're supplementing here are over 1,100 pound steers. So we're trying to, to take them to about 1,300 pounds and we're trying to finish these steers. So we're pro providing them with a high energy protein supplement. Now these steers are getting over 10, just about 10 pounds per head per day on a ration that is 82% TDN and 24% crude protein. So it's a very high energy, high protein uh, supplementation that we're providing to these finishing steers. They're also on a perennial mixed grass pasture. Um, so that's where the roughage is coming out of their diet. So let's go ahead and provide these steers with their supplementation. Excellent. We have bunk space for four steers here underneath the barn, providing them with shade. It also provides some protection from the elements to our feedstuffs. So that's great. We've got all four head eaten. Excellent. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. You know, we had a great day uh, just talking about supplemental feedstuffs. We talked about some forages. We supplemented some replacement heifers and some finishing steers. You know, we had a great day. So thank you for joining us for the 2020 Range Cattle REC Youth Field Day for the presentation of feeding stuff. And as we, you know, we summarize and we go back to, uh, you know, thinking about all the, the information we learned, we just like to finish the day eating a healthy, nutritious piece of steak. So we'd like to thank you for joining us and we just hope you, you had a great day. You hear that Florida sizzle? <laughs>